software from the different songs today that all of us can join in on. If you'll take your hymn books and look at number 795, we are so blessed. And that's going to be our opening song this morning. So let's stand together and sing We Are So Blessed. It's number 795. <laughs> I do not know of any peoples in all of the world who are as richly blessed as we are in these United States of America. I was asking Judith this morning when we were talking earlier, I said, in Kenya, do you have a day of Thanksgiving? No. In fact, I don't know of another country in the world that has a day designated as a day of Thanksgiving such as we do in America. And there may be good reason for that because nobody else has as many blessings as we do in these United States of America. Yesterday morning, I was going back over the Sunday school lesson. I was reading the scripture that I'm going to read to you this morning, uh, Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. Now, this book of Ephesians would totally revolutionize your life, my life, the life of any church if we just simply obey. So be careful how you live. Whoa. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Now, you know Paul wrote that last week. Sure it sounds like it anyway. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Now, this next verse don't apply to Baptists. Don't be drunk with wine. <laughs> because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have much to be thankful for. Amen, amen and amen. And today... Got several special things. We want to honor our veterans. Uh, you know, that's something very special to my heart. These crosses are children made. And I'll say it again, uh, Chris, to remind me if I forget it, each family take one. I'm going to take mine and take to my dad's grave over in Longwood Cemetery in Rock Hill and put it on his grave for a little while anyway, and then pick it up and take it back to my house. But we are so, so blessed and uh we're just going to give thanks to God this morning. Father God, our hearts rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in Jesus this morning. We have much to be thankful for. In fact, Father, the truth is we have too much stuff. It stands in the way of our seeing the goodness, and the blessings of God spiritually. And so, Father God, I pray that not only will we give thanks today for our material blessings, our physical blessings, but I pray that we would just, our eyes would be opened as Paul admonished us in the early part of Ephesians. We would open our eyes to see the fullness of all the spiritual blessings that God has given to us and more that God has stored up for us. And so, Lord, I just pray this would be a good time to get. Thank you for Miss Judith. We thank you for 
her ministry there in Kenya. We thank you that she has come our way today to share with us. And I pray that you'd bless us in every single thing that we do today and every day. And as Paul said, help us to live wisely, not as foolish people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to do the Star Spangled Banner, so let me ask that you stand with me if you would please do that. And before we sing that, I'm going to ask us to do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And so if you'll continue to stand as Jack reads our uh, responsive reading this morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose what strikes and bright stars through the perilous night. The ramparts we watch gallant. John chapter 15, verse 13 says, Greater love hath no man that he would lay down his life for a friend. Remember our veterans and their families also. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is reproach. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power, for there is no power but of God, the power that are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive in themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore he must needs be such. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Whether it be the king or supreme, or the governors of the kingdom that are sent by him for the punishment of the evil rulers, and for the praise of them that make you glad. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Render therefore.
announcement that we need to make this morning. And our next song is 456, Find Us Faithful. That's the next one that we'll do. But there's, we have a mystery, and uh, you may be able to help with it. But many of you have seen the, the statue of the soldier that we put up here for like Veterans Day. And it's a place to put the flag. And he's about that tall. And he's wearing sort of a dun brown outfit from head to toe. Well, he's missing. He was up here last night, and now he's gone. So if you know what happened to him or if you see him out and about, tell him <laughs> if he returns to his post, so we can, can uh, recover the, uh, uh, the soldier because as y'all know, you know, we leave no soldier behind, okay? So we want to find him. So if you know anything about that, let me know. Well, after service, Travis is going to look through the pictures. The, the video? <laughs> okay. We do, we, do, we do video everything in this room. 20 flies a day, seven days a week. So if Travis and sees a soldier walking away, ooh, <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> what <laughs> we'll turn it over to Bruce if that happens. <laughs> okay. Uh, as we sang this morning, uh, as we started our service with our blessings, uh, we want to sing now about being faithful. Find us faithful. Those who have been given a trust must prove faithful from 1 Corinthians. So let's sing together. Find us faithful. standing with me our hymn this morning for our offering is uh, number 56 to God be the glory so uh, let's stand together continue standing and sing to God be the glory all three verses and uh, then we'll have our morning offering time
you would, humble your hearts. Father, we come to you this day in a warm house of worship, your house, Lord. And there are those outside who are cold. Father, we stand here after a breakfast in good fellowship. And there are those outside, Lord, who are hungry and lonely. We truly are a blessed people to be your children, Lord. Bless this day for us, Father. Use us as your servants. Take this humble offering and use it for your power, for your kingdom. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. hope the Lord will forgive us. <laughs> um, Travis, do we have the... All right, we're going to honor our veterans in a few moments. Uh, when your branch of service, you see it on the screen, please stand. If you have a member of your family who served Army, Navy, Marine, whatever, you stand along with them. We honor you this morning. Thank God for you. Without your sacrifice and service, we would not even be here this morning. I do want to note the fact that uh, for the first time in our history, uh, our president has proclaimed the entire month of November as a time for all America to celebrate our veterans and, their, and our military families, and I think that is very commendable. We thank God for that, that uh, our veterans are being acknowledged in, a, in that manner. And, you know, yesterday, I, you know, I was trying to figure it out. I mean, all of y'all ought to be sitting down here with this, this guy this morning. You know, he was a hero in the parade yesterday. Did, did y'all know that? Y'all didn't know that? Where y'all been? Y'all hadn't been reading Evening Herald, apparently, have you? He was the uh, Grand Marshal of the Veterans Day Parade in York yesterday. We applaud you, Mr. Bill. We thank God for you. You're one of the, he is one of the very, very few uh, World War II, I noticed when I passed your brother-in-law's house today, had those flags out, as always. Mr. Whiteside down on 49. He always hangs those. Uh, so, Travis, when you get ready, you tell me, and we will proceed by recognizing our veterans. <laughs> Navy.
things were gone. I'd worked for all my life, but I had to start again with just my family and my life. I thank my God above to be living here today. Because the flag still stands for freedom, and they can't take that away. Blessed, 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 blessed. Nowhere else in the world people have the freedoms to worship God the way we do. Dr. Noel Fuller is with us this morning. He's traveled many parts of the world. I know Dr. Fuller used to spend a good bit of time doing dentistry in parts of Africa. He can tell you the same thing. There's nowhere like this place, is there? Nowhere. Nowhere else in the world. That uh, uh, Mom and I have had our foot on every continent in the, in the world. And I've seen some beautiful places. But I've never come back to this country that I don't want to get on my knees and thank God for America. And you need to feel the same way. Nowhere else. Um, Miss Judith, I'll give her a couple of extra minutes because I do not want to miss prayer time this morning. These, these pews that were unoccupied before the choir came down would have been occupied this morning with Miss Adams' family. They occupy about two or three uh, pews over here on most Sunday mornings. 
Miss Eileen is in the uh, in Piedmont Hospital. Very, very sick. And I visited her last evening. First thing she said to me was, Pastor, and she gave me full permission to share this with you this morning, else I would not share it. She said, Pastor, I thought last evening I was fixing to go home and be with the Lord. I got to work and hardly breathe. And she said, I made a commitment to God, and I do have her permission, by the way. I would not share this otherwise. She said, Pastor, I promised God last night when I thought I was about to leave here. I'd never smoke a cigarette again. I asked her two or three times, could I share that that way with you this morning? She said, yes, I need their prayers. And so uh, none of her children are here this morning. As I say, they would occupy normally two or three pews. Sharon is probably about as close to her as anybody. Sharon, would you come down? Sharon's going to represent Miss Adams for us this morning, and I want uh, some of you ladies and deacons particularly, whoever else wants to come and I want you to lay hands upon her. She represents Ms. Adams, and we're going to pray for victory in Jesus. Ms. Uh, Judith was sharing something earlier with me today about, uh, how, about cigarettes getting hold on a person. And so uh, I want you to... Sharon represents... Uh, Sharon has been very, very close to Ms. Adams and her family. Father, we... We praise you this morning. You're awesome. Awesome. Awesome God. You're greatly to be praised. We have many things upon our hearts this morning, and I could never repeat all the names on the prayer list. I do press, especially pray for Judy this morning, who is uh, really going through a difficult time. She has cared so well for her dad, who is there at home, and it's beginning to take a toll on her. She's pretty well been told that she cannot continue to do the things that she's been doing. She's got major back problems. And Lord, I want to lift up Mr. Larry, and I want to lift up Judy, and I want to lift up Maurice to you this morning. I pray they'll find in you all they need. But Lord, I especially want to pray for Miss Adams. We miss her this morning, a precious, precious soul that she is. Always she and her family occupy these two rows over here. And I thank you for those two daughters who have really stepped up and really given good care to their mom there at the hospital. Lord, I want to pray for victory in Jesus for her. Lord, this, this demon of a cigarette has taken hold of her and is a major reason she's there in the hospital. I pray in Jesus' name, claiming the power of his blood, you'll take away that appetite for that nicotine. Take it away. Not partly. Take it away completely. Thank you for Sharon, who has stood so close to this family, and she represents for us this morning, Ms. Adams. May there be victory. Next week, I pray that Ms. Adams will be back and tell us, I'm still clean. And two weeks later, I'm still clean. Amen. And a month later, I'm still clean. Amen. It can only come through Jesus. And Lord, we've seen a lot of miracles in this church. Lord, I pray that this, this is a miracle. As Jesus said one time, this kind of thing can come forth only by prayer and fasting. May some of us be willing on her behalf to fast as well as pray. Victory. Lord, we thank you for Judith. We thank you for... Joe and Crystal and their family who are, who are responsible for her being here. And Lord, as she shares this morning, I pray that you would bless her. She, you'd touch our hearts. Holy Spirit of God would fill her. And through her, Holy Spirit would speak to us this morning for Jesus' sake. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. And God bless you. <laughs> Miss Judah's going to come and share with us. Uh, me and I had a good long conversation with her earlier today and shared some things with us. You don't have time to share all of that with you. But one thing Miss Judith shared 
that I want to just touch on because a lot of people don't believe this. Ms. Judith was sharing with me and Mary about a vision that she had. <laughs> well, a lot of folks don't believe in that. Mary and I happened to have the privilege Wednesday to go to a missionary conference, and we sat with two missionaries retired from the Middle East. And they were telling us what others from there have told me in these days, and it's scripturally, scriptural fulfillment. Muslims, particularly, they're, they're entering into to Kenya right now and causing some disruption. Muslims are having visions of seeing Jesus. And many of them are being converted. They told us some particular stories I don't have time to share, but I want to tell you something. These last days, God said they speak through dreams and visions, and God's speaking that way, and he's spoken to Come on, Judah. God bless you, and thank you. Thank you, Joe and Crystal, for uh, making her available to us this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so glad to be here this morning. I have three days to go back home. And one of the prayers that I was making is that I will be here again. And I'm so happy, so, so happy to be here. I want to thank Pastor. I was telling him this morning that when I see him and Mama Mary, I see Pastor Eliakim and Mama Rachel, who took care of me as a small girl nurtured me spiritually and I really want to thank God so much. I want to thank God for my husband and my children who gave me an, a chance to come to the U.S. and to be God's representative here. I really want to thank God so much. I want to thank God again this morning for Crystal and Joe and Hannah and Morgan. I just want them to rise up and just wave to the congregation, just leave. I just want to recognize them in a big, big way for their sacrifice, for their love for me and for my family and the orphans that God has given to us. You are a great, great team in the kingdom of God and may God bless you. I want to thank Union Baptist Church for loving me so much. From the year 2015, this church has been my church. And I want to thank you because you have supported us with prayers. You supported us with your finances. You supported us with the VBS materials that have really helped our children. And I, I, I want to say that since the time I left here, there's so much that has happened. The light of Christ has shone in the community and in the orphanage, and I want to thank God. First of all, I want to say that um, maybe some of you who are new to Union Baptist are aware that um, my husband and I and the widows in the community of Bondo, we run a program for orphans. And uh, one of the things that I want to say is that my own family was a family that was so dysfunctional that nobody would know that from this family, what is happening now in the village, in the community, would come from this home or from this family. I got married to an alcoholic, even though I was raised up as a Christian, one who really loved the Lord. They did evangelism in the whole nation. But still, God brought this man into my life, Josiah. And I want to say that this morning as I speak to you, he's praying for me. And I told him that I'm going to speak at Union Baptist. And he's here. He's actually back in Kenya praying for me. And I want to say that 
My husband was an alcoholic. He was drinking, and he started drinking at age 15. And as we, at, at his teenage, he was actually hooked into alcohol. He was smoking. He was a womanizer. He was everything. Very cruel man. And as I got into that marriage and life became so, so hard and my parents could not understand and they could not believe, one thing that I did was to connect with God. Many people told me, what are you doing in this marriage? Even his relatives would tell me, you are a, you are a beautiful young girl. What are you doing with this wreck? But as I went to the word of God, the word of God spoke to me that there is a, a place of perseverance. It's a place of endurance in our walk with the Lord. And I said, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, to endure and to sacrifice, I want to see a result. And as the children came forth, and as life became so unbearable for the children, one of the things that God taught me to do is to teach the children to pray. And one prayer that I have taught the children to pray was to pray like this. Dear Heavenly Father, save daddy. And as the children prayed this prayer, I went to the bedroom and I told God, God, did you hear the children pray? If you don't answer this prayer, my children will never believe. And God heard that prayer. And as, as, as Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, pray all kinds of prayer. I made, and my children and my friends that I engaged to help me pray, we prayed all kinds of prayers. We prayed and fasted. And I argued with God, and I told God that, you know, God, my husband is not a, a, a murderer like, Paul, but like Silas. Silas was a murderer, but you still had an, an encounter with him. And he, you, he, he gave his life to you, and he became a great missionary. God, won't you save my husband? He's just in alcoholism. He's just smoking. He's just a womanizer. But please, Lord, he, did not, he has not murdered anybody. And as we pray these prayers, praying and fasting, praying and fasting, and tears rolling down my cheeks, my husband was in great bondage. And God knew that in the year 2000, the Lord had an encounter with him. And he gave his life to Christ. Amen. And he left, he went to the bedroom actually and brought packets of alcohol and cigarettes. And he put them on the table and he said, these are the things that have bound me. And they were taken out and they were bound. And his life has never been the same. He's serving the Lord. He's praying for the children. And God knew that from this man that was so useless, I'm going to raise up a mighty army. And God gave us orphans so that we can take care of. It's like God knew that this man I'm going to raise him to actually be a father to the fatherless. I'm going to turn your life, Judith, from an ordinary woman to a great woman that is going to raise up sons and daughters who have lost their fathers and their mothers. And so I really want to thank God so much for today that I'm standing here. And one of the things that I want to say again is that the Lord, <laughs> the Lord kept on telling us, is, can anything good come from Nazareth? That was the, <laughs> with Jesus. Jesus, they said, can anything good come out of of Nazareth, but Jesus died that we may be reconciled to him. So something good came out of Nazareth, and something good came out of Bondo village, and 
Today, I want to say the children run around us, run around in our compound. They're learning how to connect with God because we are teaching them that there's no other way. In as much as their parents have died, but the only way is to be connected to Jesus Christ who says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And we want to thank God because we are part of this. Raising over the, the 200 children is not easy, but God has given us the grace to do so. It would not have taken uh, you know, place, it would not have been easy if God did not touch our lives. And so I really want to thank God this day because of the transformation that he gave unto us that took place in my life that took place in my husband's life, that took place in my children's life, even though some of them, as they prayed, the way they prayed, some of them are, you know, but the Bible says that train your children in the ways of the Lord when they are young, but when they are old, they will never get out of it. Amen. And so, as we serve these children, and with your prayers, and with your support, God has been able to help us to bring life in the community. Amen. What is it that we have done ever since we left this place? The program for the children are ongoing. Uh, we started as a preschool in, my, in our late mother-in-law's house or Josiah's house. And each year, the Lord helping us, we are adding classroom, temporary structures. Uh, structures to make sure that these children remain in our orphanage to be given the love, the care, the word of God. Another thing that we do is the VBS that, you know, the materials that you gave us and the support that you gave us, the Lord has helped us to be able to not just reach to the orphans in, the, to, in our community, but to the children all over the community. So when we have VBS, all the children come forth. In, in a month's time, we are going to have VBS with the materials that you donated this year. And so it's going to be a mighty, mighty move of God in that village. What again are we doing? The Lord taught us that we cannot do this work of running an orphanage without prayers. And so as the Lord helped me to pray for the deliverance of my husband for 19 years, 19 years, a woman crying to God for the salvation of her husband. The Lord has helped us that even running the orphanage, we cannot be able to do it without prayers and intercession. And so once a month, we gather the children who are um, from age 10, we meet together once a night to be in the presence of the Lord the whole night. We are singing with children and praying, singing with the children and praying and reading the word of God. Why? Because we want God to come forth and Amen. help us. And Amen. this that we have started, we want to actually see it actualize in our lives and in the lives of those children. What else do we do? What have we done since I left here last time? I, we meet with women once a month to pray every night. We are, and once a night, we are praying together, seeking the face of the Lord to help their own children. Because a widow, when she dies, and they're, so, they're very poor women, where does their help come from? We have taught them to know that their help only comes from God. What else do we do since I left this place? The, the last time I was here was to start a sewing project. Now, this sewing project in Kenya, one of the things that happens is that our children wear school uniform. And we had one sewing machine. And we had a woman who was so poor and did not have a skill of uh, sewing. So we said, okay, Mama Jerusa, come and help us make uniforms for our children. And I, I'm so sure that as I live here, we are going to start a big project of sewing to be able to help the children or young people who have dropped out of school and maybe cannot be able to, you know, grasp what is taught in class, but can be able to, you know, earn 
a living by seeing or by using their hands. And so this is ongoing and uh, we want to thank God that God helping us is going to take, you know, a, 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 a step forward just like our the orphanage has taken a step, many, many steps ahead despite the challenges that are there. And we've been over, able to overcome the challenges through prayers and through your prayers and diligence and love for our God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want us now, having said that, you will, as a church, help in one way or another. One of the things that I ask that you will help us in Kenya with this program, and we will also help you in your programs that you're running is through prayers. And I want us to read this scripture in Acts chapter 12, and uh, see if Pia is going to read. Now, as we read this scripture, we realize that there was persecution in the church among believers. And as the persecution was so intense to a point that some of the apostles had been murdered, the church was praying. Today, there's persecution in the lives of believers. As we take care of the orphans, the devil does not care whether you are an orphan. The devil does not care whether you are a president. The devil does not care whether you are a priest. The activities and the powers of darkness are at work. They are so severe that if God would open our eyes to see the arrows that are being shot at the believers, we would actually 
you know, shudder. We would tremble. We would run to God for help. But what happens is that the enemy has blinded our eyes that we don't see that the activities of the evil one are real. They are real. They are real in our own personal lives. They are real in our marriages. They are real in the church. They are real in the nations that we live in. They are real. In my nation, they are real. They are taking away mothers from children, babies, through HIV and AIDS. They are taking fathers from their little babies and leaving the children orphans. In our nations, the enemy has arisen and is using men, fellow men, who have sold their hands to the enemy to steal, to kill, and to destroy. As we met this morning, one of the things that we learned is that Murder has become, you know, like it's an everyday occurrence. Right. And we see, we realize, Charlotte, there's murders, everyday murders. And when there's murder in the land, wickedness increases. Because life is in the blood. And the moment the blood is shed in the land, in the town, and the church does not take her position to actually speak the blood of Jesus over the land, the spirit of murder will continue. And as we take our position, when we hear that the church hears that there's murder in Charlotte, what should be the response of the church? Lord, have mercy. The blood of innocent one has been shed. May the blood of Jesus redeem the land and the people. Amen. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so when there's blood shed, we need to know that there's a higher power. Amen. The blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus was shed to stop the murders in the land. Each time I'm in this nation, I know very well when there's murder in my land, I know it because I can feel it in my body. And I begin to pray, Lord, wherever it is, God, save my people. Save my people. Take out guns from the hands of my people. Take out, um, you, get, you, get, you have to get me there, right? Because the guns are supposed to protect us. But evil men are using it to kill and to shed blood that grieve God's hand. But when you use it to protect yourself, that is very good. But when it is used to snuff life out of innocent people, then we need to pray, take out guns from the hands of wicked men. Take out knives from the hands of wicked men. Take out machetes from the hands of the wicked men. Save your people so that instead of carrying guns and machetes and knives, they begin to carry the Bible, which is the Amen. word of God. And so there's so much that is going on. There's sicknesses all around about us. We've been talking about cancer. In that meeting that we had, it was all cancer, cancer, cancer. When Jesus was on earth and people brought men and women who were sick from various diseases, there's no one that went back home with diseases. Amen. He touched them and he healed them. And so when we are in warfare, when the, the, the enemy has risen against us in different ways, through sicknesses, through murders, through sexual immorality, through secularism, through intellectualism, what ought we to do as a church? The Bible is so clear that when King Herod had, was arresting the church members and, and seizing men and women of God who feared God and there was persecution in the church and they were taken into prison, 
the church was praying earnestly. And so Peter was kept in prison in verse 5. But the church was earnestly praying to God for him. And so, did God answer the church that was praying? Yes, because <laughs> the angel of the Lord came down. And you see, the church was not there where in the prison where Peter was. But they were praying. And the Lord released his angel to take him out of the prison. There are so many that are sick in the hospitals. I went to a living in a nursing home, and I saw women who are sick. They should not die like that. But the church should be praying that the Lord may heal people. Maybe you may not be there, but you can be able to pray that the Lord may touch the sick in the hospital and God will do his part. He knows how to do it. He will release his angels. He has lots of angels who are supposed to go wherever you want them to go. And the other time, the, uh, my pastor was talking about the ministry of angels. And so in this particular scripture, the church was praying Honestly praying, God, release Peter. Release the men that are in bondage, that are in prison. And God in his mighty power. Peter was in chain. I don't know whether you've seen chains, but they're strong. You cannot be able to actually untie yourself by yourself. Someone has to come and unchain you. And then there was the iron door. The iron door is so strong that you cannot be able, no one can be able to open the iron gate by himself, however strong. Because it's so heavy, it's so strong, it's locked. But God in his miraculous ways, as the church earnestly prayed, the chains fell off, the doors were opened, and Peter walked out of prison. And as he walked out of prison, he didn't know. He thought he was dreaming. And sometimes when God answers our prayers, we forget that we've been praying. We forget that the church has been praying. And so he comes and he knocks the door. And as he knocks the door, this young girl who is so sensitive, he, he, she opens the door and she sees Peter. So Peter is at the door. She says, no, you've gone out of your mind. So that's what sometimes we do. When we pray and God answers prayers, we don't recognize that God has answered our prayer. There's one thing I want to say is this, uh, God has given us the opportunity to contact him with our difficult situations through prayer. Prayer is connecting with God. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is reporting to God the things that grieve God's heart. When you drive along the way, what do you see? As Crystal was driving me here, I saw we saw an ambulance. And immediately I said, Lord, I don't know whether that ambulance is carrying a sick person or it is going to collect a sick person, but one thing I pray is that you touch that person and release your healing power. Praise the Lord. The God has given us an opportunity to connect with him and to be able to bring forth life as believers. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. But when we sit on the light, we sit on the salt, then the unbelievers will not be able to see Christ in us. And speaking to Union Baptist Church, this is the same church that was praying in the olden times for the release of people from chains. There are so many of our relatives that cannot come to church because they are into alcoholism, because they are into the prison of sicknesses. They are into prison of uh, uh, prostitution and many kinds of evil. God has given you a chance to come to Union Baptist Church. 
I pray that God will open your eyes. That those that those members of our families who are not able to go to church, they are in chain. They are in chain. And kind of they are crying. Who can come and remove me from this prison? Who can remove me from this prison? Uh, is there someone praying somewhere? Is the church in Union Baptist Church praying enough for the salvation of those that are prisoned and cannot free themselves? If I did not pray, my husband would not have gotten saved. So someone had to be there for Josiah to be saved. Someone has to be there standing before God and praying and fasting and telling God, God, deliver my people. Rescue my people. You are blessed to be in such a great nation. And as I honor Crystal and Joe, they took me to the White House. Mm -hmm. And I stepped into where President Trump stepped. He walked there, and I'm from Africa, I also walked there. And we prayed in the White House. This nation is so blessed with so many things. Won't you turn to your God who has blessed you so much that you can be able to pray for the deliverance of people who are still hooked in sin. So many are dying. I'm dreading going back to my nation. When I see things that are happening in my nation and I hear and I read in the newspapers, I dread. But again, that is where I'm born. I have to go there and pray God to deliver. May the Lord help us. You and me pray that God will help us. It is our chance to pray for the freedom of our people. I wish I had a lot of time, but I want to leave you with this. That God has given you the key to open the gates. And the key is prayer and reading the word of God. May the Lord bless you as you pray for me as I go back to Kenya. As you pray for me to go back and, you know, meet with my children, with my husband and members of my family. May the Lord God Almighty stir into you his fire, the fire of prayer so that many will be able to sit in those seats that are remaining vacant there, that this church will be filled with men and women that will catch the fire of prayer. As I go back to Kenya, there are cards that will be left here for Pastor and his, uh, his team, cards that Joe and Crystal helped me to produce so that we can be able to, to raise funds and you can be able to uh, pick one the way the Lord will help you to support. And uh, you will contact the women's ministry here. They are willing to help with, uh, with that. May God bless you so much. And finally, I want to pray for us as a church. And I want to pray that the spirit of the Lord will, you know, will, will, will fill us. Will fill us. And that the Lord will give us the spirit of prayer and supplication. Let's close our eyes in prayer. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. We come before you as a church. Lord, we ask you that you may forgive us. Forgive our complacency. Forgive our comfort. Forgive our carelessness. Forgive us, Lord for our blindness. We are so blind. The enemy has blinded us that we cannot be able to see that you have blessed us much. Forgive our sins, Lord. Wickedness all around us. And with all the blessings that we have, we have just been so complacent. And so, Lord, I ask that in the name of your son, Jesus, you'll forgive us. Forgive us as daughters and sons, forgive us as mothers, forgive us as fathers in this church. And I want to pray that in the name of Jesus, you will show mercy to us 
Indeed, your word says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins to you, you are just and faithful to forgive us. Amen. And so, Father, we ask for your forgiveness. And we thank you because you are a God of a second chance. And I want to pray that the Spirit of God will move in the pews and, and touch every man and every woman and every child. And that you'll give us the spirit of prayer and supplication. And you'll open our eyes to see those, those things that we want us to report to you in prayer and in supplication. And Father, I want to thank you for this church that has supported the orphans in Kenya, in Bondo. Thank you so much for the way they have provided for the VBS materials, Lord, to be able to help our children learn how to connect with you. Father, I want to pray a blessing for them, particularly for Pastor Ray and Mama Mary that you bless them. And the elders of this church and the different departments in this church, the Lord, you bless them. I thank you, Lord, for making me be part and parcel of this church. And I want to pray that in the name of Jesus, you'll continue to bless this church so that they can continue to remain a blessing to those orphans under our care. We bless you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Judah, thank you. She's spoken words we need to hear. That box is full of names of people who are just like Judith spoke. They're chained, they're in bondage. Alcohol, drugs, nicotine, whatever you might want to name, they're bound. And the only way they're going to be released is through the prayers of God's people. Let's say die and go to hell. And we're responsible because the Bible plainly says their blood will be upon our hands. That is one of the most frightening passages in all Scripture. I don't understand it fully, but I know God's going to fulfill it one day. Judah, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in Kenya. Thank you for being our friend. Thank you for the children that you're caring for and pray you'd continue uh, to do that. Uh, I put this up here. Judith gave this uh, hand-carved uh, art to me, and I treasure it. I want to bring it this morning. I do treasure this and will continue to treasure uh, this as long as God lets me uh, serve upon this earth. Now, we're going to take an offering in a minute. One of the things that God's impressed upon me lately in reading scriptures, you know what? In fact, it's real interesting. In Somewhere in Ephesians, tell me, Bobby, you... Uh, we're in Ephesians is to talk about all these various gross sins of people who won't go to heaven. And then it says people who aren't generous. Where is that? It's, it's all over that, isn't it? I have really God spoken to my heart about being generous. Uh, Daddy Grace used to come to Rock Hill when I was a little boy growing up. Any of you know, any of you know Daddy Grace? Daddy Grace would come to town. And Daddy Grace would take an offering. You know what he took the offering in? The old tin tub. And Daddy Grace would tell him, I don't want no noise. <laughs> in fact, Daddy Grace would take the offering once. If they counted it and wasn't enough, he'd take it twice. If wasn't enough, he'd take it third time. <laughs> so, uh, Sheriff, you guard these doors for us. We're going to take it and count it. If it's not enough, we're going to take it again. <laughs> Now, we're not going to do that, but I'm going to ask you to be generous. All of this is going to, uh, to Judith and her ministry. Uh, if you want credit for it, uh, you can take one of these envelopes and fill it out and put your name on in the amount. We're not talking about, again, noise. Uh, we're talking about some generous giving. Uh, we can have a part in what she and her husband and others are doing uh, there in Kenya. Lee, if you have guys at two, the back doors and have one... Someone standing here, if you want to write a check, write it out to the church, and she will, she, uh, Judith will receive that money. Now, uh, Judith, we thank you. Pray, help us to pray for these people who are enslaved in this box that uh, God would surely, uh, we need somebody at the back door here. Here's where the most, <coughs> choir members go out this way, that's where the most money is. Uh.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that card is in the back. Leo will direct you to it if you don't see it. We're blessed. We're blessed uh, to be Americans. Thank God for our veterans. Uh, we're blessed by Judith being here today. And now people always come up to me and say, Pastor, announce this, announce that, announce the other, and I don't do it. You know why? Because I'm getting old. If you want me to do something, write it on a piece of paper like, uh, uh, well, see, I don't even lost a piece of paper. <laughs> All you families get one of these. If you've got a loved one that's uh, in a cemetery, you might want to put it there a few days. I plan to do that on my dad's uh, grave. But I forgot something last week and uh, let it slip my mind this morning. Y'all know what it is? I was hoping somebody would tell me. Last week, Mr. Norton turned 72 years old. He, he's drawing Medicare like the rest of us old people are. Had a birthday. Isn't that right, Mary Lynn? Is, is that? The age is what's his birthday. <laughs> oh, the age was Well, I won't tell you what his age is. You ask him. But join me in singing to, that's a blessing. So I thought this week about blessing. Greg's a blessing. As is Cindy, as is the rest of the choir, their blessings provide us music. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Greg. Happy birthday to you. How old are you? You'll have to ask Mary Lynn. I don't know. <laughs> they told me 72, so I was wrong. 65. Bruce says he's 65. God, thank you for Judith. Thank you for Joe and Crystal just helping to bring her into our life. Your union, she's very special. And Lord, I'm glad that uh, we can be a part of her ministry there in Kenya. Uh, I pray that you would just uh, simply use what we're going to do this morning. Um, and even in an ongoing way to help provide for the, uh, for the orphans. Uh, help provide for the latest that she's teaching the Word of God to, and that's so important in a country where, uh, where these ladies just sim simply need some help, some encouragement. So in all that we do, Father, I pray that we do it in your name. I know it will be done to your glory, and we thank you for this church and the part it's played in her ministry for these number of years. pray you would bless us. I pray that you'd use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. She, and she's... Sing. She's uh, going to be with, with, with the latest Tuesday. So a uh, few ladies would please go or come to that meeting. All right? We stand with me and sing. <laughs> 